YouTube. Today I'm the Naughty Librarian. I am going over my mid-February wrap-up. In the first half of February I managed to read five books and I was just loving it because they're all smutty romances. I just wanted some smutty romance in my life and I fully accomplished that. <laughs> For real, reading a bunch of like smutty romances is exactly what I needed. I'm completely out of my reading slump that I was in in January with all those really dense, tough fantasies. Like, they were dense, and these ones are just like light and fluffy, and I've just been like plowing through them. It's been a ball. I'm having a great time. Let's get into what I read. First category is Marriages in Distress, and I read two of those. I read Lover or Loser by Tessa Bailey. This is the sequel to Fix Her Up, which was one of my favorite books of 2019. Could not wait to read this one. So excited about it. And overall, in the end, I gave it like four stars. I didn't like it quite as much as I liked Fix Her Up for mainly one reason, and that is that uh, it, it's not really funny. It's not really a comedy anymore. The predecessor to this, Fix Her Up, was like, laugh out loud hilarious like literally laughs came out of my mouth I didn't just smile while reading physical laughs happened so going into this one just be aware it's not a, a laugh riot it's it's actually very dramatic and like emotional and like thought-provoking and like you get all in the feels in this one <laughs> and there's fewer far fewer jokes far 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 fewer jokes but in this one we are following Rosie and Dominic and they were introduced to us in the first book and they've been married. They're basically high school sweethearts. They married like right out of high school and 10 years later and it's just a mess. They don't have a very great relationship anymore. Rosie wants a divorce. So Dom's like, oh no, I need to like step up my game <laughs> and win this girl back because uh, Dom is kind of like uh, the strong silent type. He uh, very obviously very deeply loves Rosie, but he's just not much of a talker or is very good at expressing his emotions and feelings. So like, he'll do all of these little things for her that she never knows about and that's how he's showing like affection. But that's, basically they're learning each other's love languages. They go to marriage counseling and she needs words and he needs action. So they kind of like are working on repairing their marriage. So it was interesting in that respect that it was two people trying to repair what was broken in a relationship and they obviously deeply, deeply love each other. So it was a seeing these two people fall back in love rather than fall in love for the first time. So it's a little different than a normal romance, but um, overall I did really like it. And it's just, it wasn't as funny. So if you're going into this one thinking you're gonna get more fixer up like content, you're gonna be unpleasantly surprised because it is much darker and well I wouldn't say dark it's just more like emotional and like melodramatic than like Fix Her Up was which hilarious so not as funny definitely still well written fun and uh, I mean the smut is top-notch oh my gosh like let me tell you <laughs> Tessa Bailey write some good smut like it, it's it's great smut top-notch A+, plus, 10 out of 10 will recommend. So if you're just reading for that perspective, you're gonna be so happy. <laughs> the smut is A+, plus. the story is not as funny, but it is kind of like emotional and an interesting concept to play with. So I did like it, it's just I didn't like it as much as the first book, but I have high hopes for the next book coming out because that one's gonna have all of the banter you could ever want in the world and both of the characters are kind of like explored a little bit in this one so it does like whet my appetite for more things in the series but um yeah it's just not as good as picture up but i still liked it i also read the bromance book club by lissa k adams this is about gavin and thea and um it's kind of a, a marriage failing for different reasons Gavin and Thea had this kind of whirlwind romance. She got pregnant right away accidentally and then like, let's get married. Oh no, I'm a pro baseball player now. So it's like all a rush of things all at once. And so they didn't really have a lot of time in like courtship to like figure each other out. So now here you are several years later and she's like, who the hell am I? I've had no time to develop a personality outside of taking care of children 
alone because my husband travels a lot. <laughs> Who am I? I, I, I don't, tr she has a lot of trust issues and like, so it's just like a mess and she's like, I just want a divorce and he's just like, no, I love you. I gotta step up my game. <laughs> I want to those again. And this one in the end, I think I gave like 3.75 stars. I definitely really, really enjoyed it. And it has some laughs in it, but uh, like I've seen better crafted jokes before. Um, they're a bit like uh, obvious jokes in here. I bet they're, they're a little bit low hanging fruit. Let's be honest here. So while I enjoyed it and there were some laughs, they weren't like hilarious laughs. So I've read better comedy, but this one made an effort and the comedy that it had in it had good timing and worked. It's just I've read funnier. Let's be real here, but it like it was appropriately comedic. And I also really did enjoy like the titular bromance book club because it's a bunch of guys who all get together and read various romance novels to try to improve their relationships and understand women better. And they call them like manuals. So like, oh, we gotta learn the, learn our skills. <laughs> and they're reading these like way over the top romances to just try to like implement some of the things that they read in there into their real life relationships. So I also like that they were kind of exploring um, a lack of toxic masculinity in here. These are all men who are reading romance novels because they want to keep the women in their lives happy. They want to be better men. So they're like learning new skills and listening to women. What? Who would have thought that would have made a difference, apparently? <laughs> I also like that the characters all had a certain vulnerability to them. They all were going through some deep-seated things that they had to like get over and they had insecurities and they were able to talk about them in a way that connected me to them as a reader. So I appreciated like in the character building the vulnerability that was there. So that kind of endeared me to the plot more than I may have been if it wasn't there, I'll be honest. It's mainly on Thea, like she has a lot of trust issues that are like glaringly obvious that she refuses to address for most of the book and then when she does it's really rushed at the end. So that story arc could have been done better, but like Thea was just kind of getting a bit repetitive, honestly, in, on, in my opinion. So there were things that I could see needing improvement in it. However, still pretty solid. It had well-crafted jokes. It had uh, a, a steamy romance and it had like, it was just a fun book to read. You know, it's about a bunch of dudes reading romance novels. <laughs> like, it's, it's a fun concept. I'm definitely gonna continue on with the series. And for a start of a series, I gave it a, it's a solid debut. Well, it's not her debut book, but it's a solid debut to this series. 3.75 stars, almost four. It's pretty good. I enjoyed it. It's, it's a fun, quick read. I, I recommend picking it up. Next category is historical romance, and I read three of those. This book was not on my TBR list, but I did manage to read Devil in Winter by Lisa Klepes. This is a fan favorite. So many of my wonderful subscribers have totally recommended this book to me. So hardcore. So many of my friends in like real life have said, Amanda, you gotta read this book, it's excellent. So this was very highly recommended. I feel it's definitely a fan favorite novel from Lisa Kleifus. And I finally read Lisa Kleifus, guys. It happened, it happened this month, I finally did it. <laughs> this one is with uh, Sebastian and Evie. And basically, Evie needs to escape her abusive family. The one way she can really manage to do that is through marriage, so she goes up to Sebastian, who is a complete womanizing rake character not a good guy. He has been known to debauch many, many a, a maiden. And she's like, hey, I know you're desperate for money. I'm gonna have some because my father's dying and I need to get married like yesterday. Let's do this. It'll work out. And he's just like, you're right, lady. I am desperate for money. Let's go to Scotland and get married. <laughs> so they go to Scotland, they get married, they come back and it's like a whole thing with like a gambling hall and her father is dying. Of course, there's like threats against her life and they have to like solve a murder. And like, so there's a lot of things going on in here. Now, I'm going to be a little controversial for a moment because I know this is so beloved of so many fans out there. Everyone loves this book, but there is some problematic content that I feel I should address because I haven't heard it addressed before. Y'all know that I am a huge fan of a rake with a heart of gold character. I love that character trope. I will never get enough of it. And then you have Sebastian. He's definitely a rake. I just don't feel like his heart is made of gold. I'll be honest. 
Um, it, you know what? It may be made of silver. <laughs> he's, he's not taking the gold here, but he's like not a, such a bad guy in the end. But like there are some problems with his behavior. There are, it, it makes me not like him. I'm not, I'm fully on Team Sebastian here. I know a lot of people like him, but hear me out. It is made very clear in the text that Sebastian would never like hit or harm a woman in any way. They make it very clear that he would never force himself upon a woman, but yet he threatens to rape women often. Like I haven't read the book before this, but in that one, he kidnapped this lady and threatened to rape her. And then he threatens also to rape Evie, his wife. And like, they make it very clear in the text. They obviously go make it clear that she says, you obviously would never do that. And he's like, of course I would never actually do it, you know? So it's very clear in the text that no, he's not actually a rapist. He would never actually do that. But I don't like that it occurs to him to threaten it. Like that's very problematic. And I don't know if I'm the only one who's picked up on that, but threatening rape, not cool. <laughs> so I don't like that he's actively being such an asshole. There's a difference between asshole and grumpy. And I feel like he's crossed the line to asshole. So uh, like, I'm just not like the hugest fan of Sebastian. I'll be real. Like I liked Evie just fine. She's cool. She's not the particularly very feisty or sassy. But I like that she's very practical about things. She's just like, yeah, I need a husband and you're desperate. Let's go. So I do like her personality. And you know, she's just not very spicy. I don't know, I think it was just like an issue with the characters I wasn't like completely 100% on board with. But that all being said, I did give this four stars in the end because I did really enjoy the writing. I liked the story structure. I thought it was well crafted. It wasn't quite as funny as like uh, Tessa Dare, for example, because a lot of people said she's similar to Tessa Dare. I think she's more similar to Sarah McLean, I would say, where this was a bit more on the emotional drama side than it was on the comedy side. There is some fun banter though. So there's like hints of comedy, but I wouldn't say this is supposed to be laugh out loud funny. It's supposed to just have some lightness to it, but um, it's definitely more dramatic, I would say. But overall, it was a fun story. I thought it was well written and I enjoyed the writing style. So I would definitely read more things from Lisa Kleppis. It's just like, I am just not on Team Sebastian. I'm sorry. I know so many people recommend me this book, but I was like, it really bothered me that he kept threatening rape. <laughs> like, I hope it bothers everyone else too. Like, obviously he's not a rapist, but like, it does, I don't like that he threatens it. It's not cool. So, um, yeah, so there was some problematic content, which means I, I just couldn't rate it higher than four, but uh, I, I did enjoy it. I'm gonna read more Lisa Kleppas. I liked it. I liked her writing style. I think maybe this one in particular isn't indicative of all of the men she's going to write. So um, I'm just gonna go forward and see what happens. But uh, yeah, I did like this. Thank you everybody for forcing me to read this. Well, you didn't force me. You highly recommended that I read this. <laughs> So thank you for making me read this. I am happy I did. I also read The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband by Julia Quinn. And this was my second chance for Julia Quinn. I read one other book by her and I flat out hated it. I was, I was bored to tears with it. And so I was like, all right, I'm giving you one more shot, Julia Quinn. Let's see what you got. And, um, <laughs> okay, let's just say this. I gave it three stars. I liked it just fine. It's just not personally my taste, I would th say. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's definitely better written and more interesting than the other book I read. So maybe that was just the bad apple and this is more indicative of her normal writing style because this one was fine. It was fine, I don't have any problems with it. It just wasn't like great for me. And I think it comes down to her characters. Again, characters are very important here. But I, I feel like her characters are just a bit, a bit too prim and proper for my liking. I like them a little spicier. And I know it's Regency England, but like, I'm not exactly reading this for full historical accuracy, okay? Let your women be spicy. <laughs> We're reading it in 2020 or 2000 whenever this was published. Like, they can be spicy. You're writing for a modern audience. You're not writing for other people in the Regency era. You can make them a a bit more wild. They don't have to be so prim and proper. I don't really care about that. So if someone's reading for accuracy, I, I assume they're really, really gonna like that. 
if you're into um, a more Jane Austen type of romance where it's more uh, prim and proper but it has a lot of like clever witty dialogue you're gonna absolutely love Julia Quinn me personally um, I, I'm not so much of an Austen fan I like her banter but I, 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 I need some more spice in my characters these characters are a little bland. The characters in this are Cecilia and Edward. And um, Cecilia is a young woman in England. Her brother is off fighting in the Revolutionary War. So Englishmen fighting in America. And her brother makes friends with this other um, captain in the army named Edward. And he's like an Earl's son, so he's kind of like important. And then um, the brother and Cecilia write to each other all the time. Edward kind of gets in on it and he's like oh like is your sister cool and then like they kind of start corresponding so they like vaguely know each other and it's like a little sweet kind of romance there and then she hears oh no my brother's injured somewhere in America he's he's hurt and her father just died and she's alone in this manor house and her cousins come a calling because he's supposed to inherit it and he's a creep and he's just like you should marry me and she's like I gotta get the hell out of England <laughs> So she goes to America, goes all the way to America to go try to find her brother. So when she gets to America, she can't find her brother. However, she does happen to find Edward, who is completely unconscious, has been unconscious for days. He has a massive head injury. She's like, oh, I'm his wife. I'm Edward's wife. Have you not met me? I'm his wife. Hello. <laughs> and so it starts off with a bit of a lie. Because when, as soon as she says she's Edward's wife, people start being real nice to her because he's an Earl's son. So she like kind of nurses him back to health and you know, he finally comes to. And the thing is he doesn't remember a whole lot of anything. A lot of his memories are gone. He has amnesia for the past several months because of this head injury. So he's like, well, I guess we're married. I don't remember it happening, but I guess we're married. So he kind of just is at her mercy a bit. And there's so many opportunities for her to come clean and say like, listen, I lied. I totally lied, but I had to, I'm sorry. They already know each other, like he wouldn't help her. Like I don't understand the, all the opportunities she has to come clean and it doesn't. So that's like a large part of the book is this big lie. <laughs> and I'm like, just, just tell him, just tell him, just tell him, just tell him. And it, it got to the point where I was annoyed that she wasn't telling him. So I think that was kind of another reason it ended up being three stars. It was just like, yeah, th these are missed opportunities for laughs. Like there's, there's so many jokes that could have been made if they were faking this marriage for more of the book and he was in on it. Like it would have been a better book. Am I wrong? Probably not. I don't think I am, at least in my opinion, my tastes, I would have liked this expertly more if she just didn't lie to him. And that kind of made the book a bit boring, honestly. Just like, there's no changes to the story. There's no like stakes that are getting raised. It's just the same thing, the whole story. So I don't know. I, I gave Julia Quinn another chance. It's just, it's kind of bland. And I, I don't necessarily like the story structure. And this is the second one. So I just don't think Julia Quinn's gonna be for me. I gave it a fair shot though. And this one was considerably better than the other book I read by her, but it, it's just, it's not my personal taste. And I, and I kind of think these are how most of her books are written. I feel like this is a proper indication of her writing style. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm moving on. I'm just not going to read more Julia Quinn. Oh, well, <laughs> there's other things to read. The last book I read also wasn't on my TBR, but I read To Marry a Scottish Laird by Lindsay Sands. And I read this mainly as a palate cleanser after Julia Quinn, because I needed something I knew I was gonna like. <laughs> this is about Campbell and Joan. And um, this is like the second book of this Highland Bride series. I've read books one and three, so I'm now I have that pocket filled in finally. And um, I didn't like it as much as I liked one and three. I'll say that. Like, I did like this a fair amount. I give it like four stars. I thought it was definitely really, really fun. And there's there's room for jokes and the opportunity to have the jokes isn't passed. So I did like it. I didn't like it as much as the other ones I've read in the series, but it was still pretty good. Basically, uh, Campbell is um, going to inherit his chieftainess. I, I forget what the word is right now, but like Scottish lord status. And um, Joan is a commoner woman. She's traveling dressed as a boy because she has to deliver this scroll to the McKays. And we were introduced to the McKays in book one. So I was like, oh, we're going back there. Nice. And uh, Campbell comes across this young boy on the road getting the snot beat out of him by robbers. 
So he steps in and saves the kid and gets stabbed for his troubles. So Joan, the boy, takes care of him until one night he's gonna go out to the river and he's like, oh, Joe's bathing. Oh, Joe's got boobies. It's Joan. <laughs> he finds out pretty quickly, this is a woman. They kind of have this like really heavy, lustful attraction to each other. And let's actually talk about the smut for a minute because that's a, one of the main reasons I could not rate this as highly as I rated the other two books. And that was because like, it, it's questionable-ish consent, I would say. And I don't mean questionable in a bad way necessarily because he kind of just kisses her and then starts going at, and then they just like go at it like zero to 60, like she's never really kissed anybody before and she and the first time she's making out with him, they like do it. And he never like talked to her and says, hey, I know you're a woman, I'm attracted to you, do you want to do this? He doesn't really ever ask her anything, he just like kisses her and then like she's into it, like very obviously into it, she encourages the behavior, she wants to be doing what they're doing. So there is consent, but like, I didn't like that it was never talked about beforehand. And even the characters keep bringing it up to themselves in their own monologues. It's like, we should have really talked. Considering, you know, she was a maiden. And in this time period, he's basically just ruined this poor girl. <laughs> and like, had no intention of marrying her. So there were some problems in the romance right away. And actually that ends up being one of the problems in the relationship is that they don't talk to each other very much. They have all of the sex but they don't talk a lot <laughs> and then eventually that does get remedied then was like you know you should go talk to your wife right that's kind of part of being married and he's like oh yeah i guess you're right we should talk and then they do and then they have like a much more healthy relationship so i did appreciate that they grew in their relationship and they did learn and like really have a love match rather than just a animal attraction match so while I wish there would have been more talk before they did it, <laughs> which honestly was just like so zero to 60 abrupt that it was just, it, it felt abrupt. I'm like, wait, how are they already fucking? Yeah, so this like a consent thing. I wish they would have talked more. I, I would have rated this so much higher if that had been in the book, but it wasn't. However, it is clear consent because she's very much into it and encouraging the behavior. But on the other side, she didn't really have the opportunity to discuss things before they just went full on for it. So, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. They had opportunities for jokes, then they took them. It's like a fun book. It's like Scottish and like a shotgun marriage. There's a murder mystery they have to solve. I feel like all of the books in this series are going to have a murder mystery and like I'm into it. <laughs> it's just like smutty Highland romance with a murder mystery thrown in and I love it. So yeah, it, it's total book candy, honestly. It's such book candy. It's light, it's quick to consume, and it leaves a sweet taste in your mouth. Total book candy. I do recommend if you just want like a fun quick read. Overall, it's really good. I would say the other ones are better for different reasons, but um, I still really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. A plus, I enjoyed it. Well, not an A plus, but like a solid A minus. <laughs> it was pretty good, I enjoyed it. Okay, so five books in the first half of this month. Pretty good. I think that's a pretty good rate of reading here. And I read all of the, the smutty romances my heart could ever want. So I did have a good time. There were some ups, there's some downs. I try to be as like honest about the books I read as possible because, you know, sometimes there is questionable content and things that I think should be discussed. But overall, I think I gave all of these books pretty much four stars or just, you know, rounding up to four. So, so far so good. I've had a good time with these. Let me know in the comments down below, have you read any of these books? And if so, which ones are your least favorites, your most favorites? Let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know, do you prefer contemporary romance or historical romance more? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.